the next presentation is uh, exploration of increasing driver trust in a semi-autonomous vehicle through real-time visualization of collaborative driving dynamics by Isa Kogel. Hi everyone, my name is Alisa. Uh, today I'm here uh, representing VLX Design Lab, which is part of the Institute of Industrial Science at the University of Tokyo. Uh, I'd like to present to you thinking, the Thinking Wave, um, which is a project looking at uh, exploring, the, uh, exploring increasing driver's trust in semi-autonomous vehicles through real-time visualization of a collaborative driving dynamic. So our research question is what if we could increase the driver's trust in a semi-autonomous vehicle by visualizing the collaborative uh, driving process in real time? So we ran uh, some workshops as well as uh, this project began some time ago in June last year and continued to develop and roll out. Um, so we created, we, uh, what emerged were two visualizations, uh, Tidal and Tandem, which I'd like to now introduce to you. So firstly, Tidal is exactly what the Thinking Wave is. It's a wave visualization and intuitively so. So based off of uh, this, um, it's a simple and intuitive visualization of the situational complexity. Um, and based off of the road condition ahead, uh, uh, the amplitude, frequency, and speed of the wave will vary. Um, so a wave which indicates in real time how difficult the situation is for the system to handle, therefore reflecting um, the lack of con uh, confidence and suggesting the driver to adjust their control. So let's say, for example, on a clear day uh, when you're driving on, let's say, a highway and the vehicle can be in control, the wave will be very uh, calm. But on the other hand, let's say uh, you're driving in an area with high pedestrian footfall, maybe it's rush hour, uh, and the driver should be in control. So the wave is very intense, um, reflecting that the system is uncertain of accurately detecting as well as handling the situation. Uh, concept number two is the tandem wave. So it's a visualization of the collaborative dynamics uh, between the driver and the vehicle. So the driver is represented as the circle and the vehicle a square. So depending on their position as well as size and kind of rotational speed, this will um, uh, articulate different levels of uh, and layers of information. So for example, uh, the circle and um, uh, the circle and the square, depending on their position, it will reflect which is the leading controller. Uh, the size and ratio will determine the trust dynamic and the dependency assist and control dynamic. Um, and the rotational speed will uh, articulate the situational complexity. So, for example, let's say in a collaborative control, both the circle and the square, so the driver and the vehicle system, are the same size and moving at a moderate pace. Uh, whereas, let's say, in heavy rain and low visibility, and the driver is, is in control or should be in control, the circle, which represents the driver, is at the top position or the front position. Um, and the square, which is the vehicle system, is small and moving very rapidly and is the second um, or lowered position. And then we have, let's say, in the situation of uh, driving uh, long distance on a highway with clear visibility and road conditions clear, so the vehicle being can, could be in control again. Uh, the square, which is the driving system again, um, is the main kind of position. And the circle, which is the driver, is small and inside the square, and it's moving both at a moderate pace. Um, in let's say a semi-autonomous situation like maybe slow moving highway traffic um, where the vehicle could be the dominant control but perhaps at times the driver should keep their hands on the wheel and assist uh, the square would be the main size uh, controller in the front and then the circle secondary and in the back so the goal for us uh, was not just to create uh, visual uh, concepts but also um, to create a testable prototype. So what we did was create um, not only, yeah, what I just presented, but uh, some hardware and experience-based things. So uh, I won't go too much into detail with this, but we are considering other elements like haptic and uh, voice dialogue notifications and awareness elements um, to supplement and also create a more holistic uh, vision. 
Um, but in terms of uh, creating something that is a prototype and testable, so we created this setup. So the IIS has a driving simulator um, and we built the concept into this. So we created a windshield display using a projector and uh, projecting the waves. Um, and then other hardware elements such as the steering wheel, which into which we uh, built, well, we had an Arduino that um, was sending haptic data, but also collecting um, through an FSR sensor that was on the perimeter of the wheel, uh, collecting data about um, uh, hand position and also grip strength. Um, so for future tests, we would be able to analyze that sort of data. Um, in terms of the waves, so it's they're all individual animations of different uh, amplitudes or speeds or you know uh, configurations of the wave, and we play them through Touch Designer. So depending on the road condition, we would initiate different waves. Um, I'd like to play to you a video we made about our project, um, which I think uh, summarizes everything really well. So this is it. So the Thinking Wave is a project that explores the building and calibration of trust between uh, semi-autonomous vehicle driving systems and drivers. Our challenge was to figure out a way that is understandable and also empowers the driver to take control when they feel is necessary, but also is safe. In this project, we have two concepts. The tidal wave is this simple wave visualization. The harder it's thinking and the less confident it is, the more the wave is moving uh, and active visually. Whereas for tandem wave, when the vehicle visualization is spinning quickly and is smaller, the vehicle is also putting a lot of effort in and thinking very hard. If the position is lowered and smaller, that means that the vehicle is not very confident and the driver is suggested to take over. Part of our concept, uh, we have a steering wheel that not only gives you haptic feedback, but also measures the driver's kind of interaction and experience when they're driving on the road. So it's not only about uh, creating a concept that in the short term is understandable, but also as the technology evolves, the concept should also evolve so that drivers can in real time understand what these concepts mean and what the technology is capable of. Um, so as mentioned, in the next stage, we would like to really test this and see how people handle um, and behave in the driving simulator when the wave is presented or without the wave and compare these situations. Uh, also understand how they com comprehend them. And um, yeah, these are some methods that we're thinking of to collect data. Um, but I think that's all for time. So uh, I'd like to leave it now to feedback and discussion um, and yeah, answer any questions or I, uh, have any thoughts you might have uh, shared with me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aisha. Uh, if we can be Okay, uh, thanks so much for your amazing design and the presentation. I've got a question as, uh, as you mentioned in your video, um, uh, in, in the end of the presentation, uh, the concept is, um, uh, I, I'm not sure if it is it's very easy to, to the participants to understand what does it mean because we use the, uh, you use the circle, the, 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 the square and the wave line, uh, but I'm not sure if it's the only choice for this design because I always have this question. Uh, as a designer, we design something uh, to um, explain something, but is this the only choice or the only way to say this meaning? I'm not sure uh, if the it, it, it is hard to the participant to understand or remember this because I think this design needs some time for the participants to learn. Yeah, this is my first question. Thank you. Thank you for your question and your feedback. Um, yeah, I think we were keeping into mind um, what you think about how abstract it is and the participants kind of involvement. Um, so that's kind of 
part of why we're going to test it now. Uh, so one of the suggestions we've already had is to perhaps label like the circle and the square to consistently remind the driver of who is what, right? So that they can understand it. Uh, part of our test, we're also thinking of having two groups. So one group that is um, not at all like told anything about what the visualization means and another group mm -hmm. that is kind of trained at the beginning. So we have two concepts. I think there's pros and cons to each one. I think the tidal wave is really, really easy to understand. It's really intuitive. It's kind of like when humans are stressed and we look at our kind of cardiometer, like uh, the, the wave is really intense, right? So it's very easy to understand, but the kind of information that's delivered is very surface level. Whereas tandem wave, we're kind of uh, really interested in further exploring, but it's so abstract. So we're also thinking of not just the completed kind of uh, experience, but how the participant or even the, you know, the future, the driver can build up to this and really understand and coexist and learn together as the technology evolves. Okay, uh, thanks. And I have another question. Um, I think should be the concept one, uh, there's a high in uh, intensity of the, like the wave line on the corner, uh, maybe it will may cause the nervous and the stressful, but should we like do this is the situation is so um, emergency that we attract all the attention from the participants to this information. Um, should we do this or um, is there a very like, reasonable reason uh, for us to do this? So I think it's a really valid point as well. So we put it in the corner as of now. Um, because of visibility, we tested actually a couple of different areas and it seemed to be the most appropriate based off of what you would see when you were sitting in the driver's seat, um, putting it in the corner of the windshield. But yeah, I think you do raise a good point. Maybe it is that the wave needs to become less visible or subtle or disappear mm -hmm. at some point so that the driver can completely focus on the road ahead of them. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, may I ask another question? Thanks for the nice presentation and the very nice and cute design. <laughs> so uh, my question is, are you going to consider to, let's say, uh, include some uh, qualitative, um, let's say, interview in the future participants test to uh, really see how they interpret this thinking wave? Because um, in my view, like, you know, when you represent the effort of the vehicle uh, to the single wave, um, I'm not sure, like, uh, which metrics or uh, from which angle you are, pre uh, you are showing them the, the effort. Um, and then I'm not sure how the user would interpret it, the, the effort. So let's refer to the previous slides, the, the previous presentation, maybe uh, it's a way to compare the user's model and the designer's model. <laughs> what do you think? Right, I think, um, yeah, I completely agree. Um, also, so in terms of testing, um, first of all, the tidal wave and the tandem wave, they kind of represent different things. The tidal wave is more about how the kind of the ability of the vehicle system. Uh, and in response to that, the driver will take over or not. Whereas the tandem wave will, it gives you much more information than that. It can give you the capability and dynamic. So, um, so for one, we need to be able to um, measure the data of both, but also make sure that the data when we compare them are um, not equal, but uh, kind of um, give relevant feedback because when you have two different sets of uh, kind of things that you're comparing, you want them to be uh, on, a, on the same level. So that's one. Um, and the other point you mentioned about, uh, sorry, what was the other point you mentioned? Uh, maybe interview? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, one, one thing is, I guess, to measure the handling, but we're also going to, we are planning to interview uh, the participants because uh, it, I think, as we all know, uh, people will behave one way, but say that they prefer something or uh, 
understand something a certain way. Um, and it's really important to note that we are going to do interviews instead of some sort of questionnaire because um, with some sort of multiple choice questionnaire, there's a risk of people just uh, giving a response to something because they feel obligated to or um, because of some psychological effects. So uh, we do want to like diligently take in their uh, interview responses. Thanks, thanks for the answer. Okay, uh, it's time now. So thank you, Aisha. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would personally like to thank both the speakers and the audience for providing such an interesting session and discussion. Uh, this session is now closed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.